क्लास टेन साइंस चैप्टर वन केमिकल रिएक्शन एंड इक्वेशन आई हैव डिवाइडेड दिस चैप्टर इन टू टू पार्ट इन दिस वीडियो आई विल कवर द बेसिक डेफिनेशन एंड बैलेंसिंग ऑफ द केमिकल इक्वेशन इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो आई शेल डिस्कस द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ केमिकल रिएक्शन सो लेट स्टार्ट What are chemical reactions? So, chemical reactions are the processes in which one or more substances are transformed into new substances with new properties. Now, let us discuss the characteristics of a chemical reaction. So, the following things can be evolved uh, in a chemical reaction. First, evolution of a gas. So, in a chemical reaction, when a chemical reaction takes place, a gas can be formed. For example, the reaction between zinc and sulfuric acid. In this reaction, if we take zinc granules in a conical flask and add di dilute sulfuric acid to the flask, then we observe that bubbles of hydrogen gas are formed. Second, evolution of a precipitate or formation of a precipitate. A precipitate is any insoluble solid formed after a re chemical reaction. So, for example, if we take the reaction between le lead nitrate and potassium iodide, then we observe that a precipitate of lead iodide, which is yellow in color, is formed and potassium nitrate is also formed in, is in an aqueous solution. Third, ch a change in color can also take place. Fourth, a change in temperature. So, the temperature of the solution can also change after a chemical reaction. For example, in the above uh, example of zinc and sulfuric acid, uh, when we touch the side of the flask, we observe that it is a little hot. Fifth, change in the state. So, there can be a change in the state of the reactant. For example, burning of candle wax. In this process, the candle wax which is a solid, burns to form water, which is liquid, and carbon dioxide, which is a gas. So, in this way, a change of states takes place during the chemical reaction. Now, a chemical reaction has two parts, reactants and products. Reactants are the substances which undergo the chemical change in the reaction. So, they are the initial substances. Products. They are the new substances formed after the reaction. So, in the chemical reaction, basically, the reactants react together to form the products. Now, we will understand this uh, with the help of an example. For, uh, we have been studying in earlier classes the reaction between magnesium ribbon and oxygen. So, the magnesium ribbon burns in the air to form a powdery substance known as the magnesium oxide. So, in this reaction, magnesium and oxygen, which are reacting to form the product, are the reactants. And magnesium oxide is the product. Also, a plus sign is placed between the, both the reactants to separate them. And the uh, arrow is placed in between the reactants and products to show the direction of the reaction. Also, on top of the arrowhead, a uh, the reaction conditions such as heat, sunlight, etc., catalyst, etc., are placed. Now, this method of representing a chemical reaction in the form of its symbols is known as a chemical re equation. Types of chemical equations. So, there are two types of chemical equations, balanced equations and unbalanced equations. Balanced. A balanced chemical equation is an equation in which the atoms of each element is same on the both of the sides of the equation. So this means that the atoms on the side of reactants is equal to the number of atoms on the side of product. A equation must be balanced to obey the law of con conversation, conservation of mass. That means that the total mass of the elements present in the reactants is equal to the total mass of elements present in the products or the mass of reactants is equal to the mass of products. Unbalanced or skeletal equation. Uh, unbalanced chemi chemical equation is an equation in which the number of 
atoms on the reactants and product side is not equal. It doesn't obey the law of conservation of mass. That means that the reactants and products mass is unequal. Now let us discuss how to balance chemical equations. So I will teach you this with the help of example. So here I have given you an equation iron plus water is equal to Fe3O4 plus H2O or Fe plus H2O is equal to Fe3O4 plus H2O. Now can you tell me is this equation balanced? Now in the earlier section we have read that a balanced equation is one in which the number of atoms on the side of reactants is equal to the number of atoms on the side of products. So, uh, for iron, on the reactant side, it has only one atom. But on product side, it has three atoms. Similarly, hydrogen, oxygen has one atom on the reactant side, but five atoms on the product side. So this equation is not balanced. I will teach you the balancing of chemical equations in a 7 step process. So step 1. We have to make a table of the number of atoms of each element of the equation. So here we have the table. Here we have the elements iron, oxygen and hydrogen. The number of atoms in reactants and the number of atoms in products. Iron. So, in the reactants, iron has one atom. And in the products, iron has three atoms. Second, oxygen. So, in the reactants, oxygen has one atom. And in the products, oxygen has four atoms. Hydrogen. In the reactants, hydrogen has two atoms. And in the products, hydrogen has Two atoms. So now here we have a complete table of the number of atoms in reactants and the number of atoms in products. So let's move on to step 2 of the process. So in step 2 we will start balancing the compound uh, with maximum number of atoms. So we will choose the compound which has most number of atoms. So can you tell me which, which is that? Yes, that is Fe3O4 as it has 7 atoms. So we will choose the Fe3O4. Now, in, in this compound, we will choose the element with the maximum number of atoms. So that is oxygen. So we will start balancing oxygen first. So how, how to balance? Now we have moved to the step 4 of the process. So we will make the number of atoms of oxygen same on both the sides. So how we will do this? We will do this by multiplying a number on the reactant side so that it is equal to 4. So 1 multiplied by what number will be equal to 4? That will be 4. So therefore we will multiply this oxygen with in the reactants with 4. Now there is a rule of balancing that whenever we multiply uh, a number then we have to multiply that number with the whole compound because we cannot alter the formula of the compound. So here we, uh, when we multiply this by 4 we will have to multiply the whole compound that is H2O by 4. So therefore hydrogen will also be have to be multiplied in the reactant side by 4. So we will have 8 atoms of hydrogen in the reactant side. Now, as you can see that hydrogen is unbalanced. So, we will have to balance it. For this, we will multiply the hydrogen in the products by 4. So, here in the compound also we will have to multiply it by 4. Now, you can see that both hydrogen and oxygen are balanced but iron is left and in the reactants, it, is, uh, it has one atom while in the products it has three atoms. So to balance it, we will multiply it by three in the reactant side. So now all three 
elements are balanced. So this entire chemical equation is completely balanced. So we final equation, balanced equation, we have 3 Fe plus 4 H2O is equal to uh, Fe3O4 plus 4 H2. Now let us move on to step 6 of this process. So here we have the final balanced equation and now we will add the uh, symbols of the physical states of these of these compounds. So physical states are the states in which these compounds occur. And the short form for gaseous state is G, small g, uh, which is written in bracket. A liquid state is small l, solid state is small s. And uh, if this uh, substance is a solution in water or it is an aqueous solution, then we write it as aq in small letters. So let us fill the uh, states. Iron occurs in solid states. So therefore I have written a small s. Water all, always occurs in, in this reaction in liquid state. So I have written a small l. Iron oxide that is Fe3O4 occurs in the solid state. So we will write s. And H2 that is hydrogen occurs in a gaseous state. So we, I have written G. Now let's move on to step 7. So also we write the reaction conditions such as temperature, pressure or catalyst below or above the arrowhead. So here the reaction did not have any reaction condition but I uh, will give you another example. For example photosynthesis reaction. So in this reaction 6 carbon dioxide plus 12 water combine to form uh, glucose and 6 O2 plus 6 water. Uh, so in this reaction sunlight and chlorophyll which are required for this reaction they are placed above and below the arrowhead as you can see in the picture. Now let us solve another question based on balancing the chemical equations. This time the question is given in the form of a word equation that is barium chloride plus sodium sulfate is equal to barium sulfate plus sodium chloride. So first we will have to convert this word equation into a symbol equation or a skeletal equation. So for this we will have to find the formulas of barium chloride, sodium sulfate, barium sulfate and sodium chloride. So, uh, in class 9th, we have learned how to find the formula of the compounds. Now, let us re revise, revise it quickly. So, we will do this by the cross multiplication me method. So, in this, first let us do for barium chloride. For this, first we will write the name, uh, the symbols of the elements. And then, we will write their valencies. I am sharing the chart of all the valencies of all the elements. So, barium has valency 2 and chloride ion has va valency 1. So now we uh, cross multiply the valencies and we get the formula as BaCl2. Similarly, uh, we'll do for sodium sulfate. So uh, we'll write the symbols, then we will write the valencies and then we'll find their formula that is Na2SO4. Similarly, we find the formula of barium sulfate as BaSO4 and sodium chloride as NaCl. So now we have the skeletal unbalanced equation of this reaction. So now we will again follow the steps to balance the equation. So first, first step do you remember it? So it is we will make a table and uh, here we have written all the elements involved in this reaction. And now let us fill the uh, complete the table. So barium. So on the reactant side barium has one atom. And on the product side, barium has one atom. Sodium. So on the reactant side, sodium has two atoms. And on the products, one atom. So SO4 ion, it has one atom on the reactant side. And one atom on the product side. Chloride, it has two atoms on the reactant side and one atom on the 
product side. So now to balance this equation, we will take the element uh, uh, compound with the most number of atoms, which is Na2SO4. And in this uh, compound, we will take the element with the maximum number of atoms, which is sodium. It has two atoms. So uh, on the reactant side, sodium has uh, two atoms, but on the product side, it has only one atom. So to balance it, we will multiply the product side by 2. So therefore, as, as you remember that, it has to be multiplied with the entire compound. So uh, Cl with the chloride ion also, it will be multiplied by 2. So now, uh, barium is already balanced, SO4 is also balanced and sodium and chloride we have balanced now. So finally, we get the balanced equation as BaCl2 plus Na2SO4 uh, is equal to BaSO4 plus 2NaCl. I hope that you have properly understood balancing chemical equations with the help of these two examples. Stay tuned for the second video. Thank you.